we can use the blur effects inside After Effects in some really unexpected ways. We can use them to manipulate shapes, to create depth, to create some reactive shadows, and even some cool looking vintage effects. Let's get stuck in using blur to create uniform around edges. This is perfect if you want to round the corners of something that you've animated as a stroke or that is an unusual shape. First, we should add the blur effect. Now any blur will do. Gaussian is the safest and easiest. Carl Friedrich Gauss would never lead us astray. So let's add that to our layer and let's blur it by around 20 pixels, which blurs out the shape, but in doing so completely destroys our pointy corners. And now we can do something a little clever by clamping down on the alpha channel. We can do that with a few effects, but the simplest one is levels. So let's add the levels effect and choose the alpha channel. Now at the moment we have a nice soft blurred edge, but if we move in these triangles in this histogram towards the middle, it will clamp or crush or squeeze the alpha channel. So the pixels that are kind of transparent will become fully transparent and the pixels kind of opaque will become fully opaque. And once they're close enough, there will be nothing in between. It is good to leave a slight gap here though, because if you get too close, the edge just becomes a little too harsh and jagged and just too, just too crusty to be enjoyable. So let's leave a slight gap here. And that's barely noticeable even at 800%. And now we've got nice round corners. And now we can increase the blurriness to increase the radius and the roundness of those corners. We might need to tighten up the levels a bit if we blur it a little further. And we can also adjust whereabouts on the histogram these triangles meet in order to expand the edge or bring it in closer. This effect is also really helpful for shapes like this, where we might want rounded inner corners. Now you can use a rounded cap on its stroke, but the insides are still pointy. And even if we play with the inner roundness of the shape, it doesn't give us a nice consistent look. So let's remove that stroke and paste that blur and levels effect onto the shape. That blur is far too much, so let's reduce that and move these triangles back to the middle. And now we've got consistent straight lines down the star and a nice rounded end on the inside and the outside. And that roundness will stay consistent if we scale it up or if we adjust the path in any way, which does come in handy. Next is using the same effect stack of blur and levels, but this time applied to an adjustment layer for a quick blobby liquid look. So let's create a new adjustment layer on top of everything and let's rename it effects because we always label our layers. And we're gonna paste on those same effects again. And now when our layers get close to one another, they kind of melt together. And it's kind of gluey, a little bit slimy, but you know, a nice slimy. And this happens again because without this levels effect, the edges of these shapes have been softened so much and the levels effect doesn't know or care that they're separate shapes. It will just round the edges of them both together once they are close enough that their blurs overlap. We can push that blur really far to get some way more interesting blobby results. And even when we change the color of one of the shapes, we get this nice gradient as they're kind of mixing into one another, which can be kind of cool too. Now we can use a similar method to achieve a completely different look but still using the blur to degrade our image and then trying to salvage it back with another effect and getting some marvelous artifacts in the process. So let's again create another adjustment layer, add our Gaussian blur, and let's start by just blurring it to five pixels. So it's just the slightest softness. And now we're gonna add a sharpening effect. Regular sharpen is fine, unsharp mask if you're feeling fancy. And let's increase that sharpen amount up to 300 until it's about as clear as it was before the blur. And now we can see the effect it's creating. The sharpen is essentially undoing the blur, creating more contrast and defined edges where we just remove them. But it's having to work harder and overcompensate for that blur. And we get this kind of nice sort of halo effect where our edges now have a dark and a light side. And that gets more obvious the more contrast there is between those colors. And it isn't exactly like, but it is reminiscent of maybe a dodgy CRT screen or just some messed up footage. And you can use this really subtly to just remove that clean digital sheen if you're going for a more gritty style, or you can increase them both to make it really obvious. At a certain point, if you increase the sharpen too much, it will kind of break around some of these areas though. Or you can approach it really subtly, but then copy and paste those effects and add the blur and sharpen again, and again, and again and again, and again, and again. It can also be a really good compositing technique to unify everything underneath it with that same depravity. In this project, I've got some stock footage and textures and they just don't quite look cohesive. These astronauts look pretty obviously like 3D models and they just look a bit out of place with these textures and that smooth gradient in the background. But adding that blur and sharpen over the top puts them in a more similar world. It gives them a consistency, which just makes it a little more believable. And of course that pairs very nicely with texture, add noise and other effects to make your work look nice and roughed up. 
So by reducing the fidelity of your image, you're covering your tracks and you're getting away with it because no one could identify you at the scene. We can also create some really neat reactive shadows. So let's create a new shape layer and just start drawing some arbitrary rectangles around the place. That should be plenty. And to this layer, we are going to add the effect CC Radial Fast Blur. And if we move the center around, it's blurring our rectangles away from this point. Let's increase it to make it more obvious. And let's set the zoom style from standard to brightest. There we are. That is looking nice. Almost looks like light leaking through holes in a window, which you could use this effect for as well. And if you want a different color shadow to your shapes, we can add a fill effect. And then add the effect CC Composite back over the top as well. Now we've got some shadows. And to attach that center point to another layer, all we need to do is alter option, click the stopwatch next to center, and then drag that pick whip up to the position property of that layer. And when we move that around, it looks like it is casting the shadows. Yes, hello. Sorry, I'm in the middle of a tutorial. No, I'm afraid I can't plug my master motion design course at the moment. Yeah, yeah, despite the incredible response from the students. I have, I've seen the testimonials on bedmarried.com. Yes, yeah, the student collab project did come out recently. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, really great work. That was one of my favorites too. All right, is that everything? Okay, bye-bye. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, let's get back to the... Camera Lens Blur is the Rolls-Royce of blurs, the Andrew Kramer of blurs. It replicates the blur you get from an out-of-focus camera much more than other blurs. We have an absolutely wild cast of settings here where we can tweak the shape of the bokeh and the highlights. It's more realistic, more pleasing, just more satisfying. That satisfaction comes with a price and that's processing power and render time. So keep that in mind if you need to make haste on a project. But the feature in Camera Lens Blur that I'm excited about is the blur map. A blur map takes some reference footage, uses its black and white values to adjust which parts of the image are blurred or not. If they're white, it is the max blur in your settings. If they're black, no blur at all. And the grays are all somewhere in between. Now, I'm gonna be going through the creation of this whole animation during an online session at Adobe Max this year. But I do wanna show off how I used a blur map to create this focused effect and make it look like all the shapes on the outside are gradually going out of focus. And how you can create custom blur maps for your animations to get similar results. So starting with the animation already done, we need a blur map. So let's duplicate this tunnel main comp, call it tunnel main blur map, and go inside that duplicate. So what we want is our center layer to be one color, which will make it white, and then the layers beneath it to get darker and darker and darker until they're black at the very edge. Or we could do the opposite with black in the middle, white on the edge. As long as it's black to white, it is very easy to invert later in our effect settings. If you do have a simpler scene, you can just grab your layers and change the fill color of them to between black and white, but because we have so many stacks on top of one another, we can do something a bit clever to cut down the time. So first, let's make this top layer white, which we are controlling its color with a fill effect. So we'll turn that white. We are going to copy that fill effect with Control or Command C, select all of our layers here, except for the background, and paste that white fill onto them. So now they are all white. And now we're going to drag down all of the opacity properties really low, down to about 4%. And because there's more of them stacked on top of one another in the middle, that is lighter and they get darker towards the edge. Lovely. To make that more obvious though, let's change the blending mode to add and to an adjustment layer on top of all of them, let's add a curves effect to really increase that contrast so we have full control. There, that is exactly what we want. We've got a perfect black and white blur map ready to use. So back in our main comp, let's drag in our blur map and we can actually hide it. It doesn't need to be visible for our camera lens blur effect to perceive it. But while we're here, let's keep it visible and change its blending mode to multiply because now we're getting some really nice accurate shadows which only affect the outer edge layers. So let's keep them on and now let's add to our adjustment layer at the top, camera lens blur. Let's pump up the blur way up to around 50 so it's very noticeable. And from the blur map, let's select our layer tunnel main blur map and it is blurring the center more because our center was white, so we can just check invert blur map. So now it is blurring our edges, our dark areas of the blur map. And now we've got really nice shallow depth of field effect going on. And we can even rack focus by changing the blur focal distance property. So we can make the center back out of focus or make somewhere in between the most out of focus. So once you've finished animating your scene, you can duplicate the comp, make everything black and white, depending the depth of your scene, and then with camera lens blur, you've got complete control over what is in focus. Now the compound blur effect also has a blur map feature, but the blur doesn't look 
quite as good, and you deserve the best, so it's okay to treat yourself every now and again. Don't be so hard on yourself. Sometimes it's nice to step away from it all for a bit, and remind yourself that your value is not confined to the work you produce, your productivity, or whether what you're doing makes sense to anyone else at all. Anyway, I hope these blur tricks help you out in some tight spaces or through some tough projects. And I also used a blur map in a bit of a different way to create this animated ink bleed. So if you want to go deeper, you can check that one out. I'll see you in the next one.